Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode number 24 of The Mentors with our local mentors that we have all the time on the show, Matt LaHood, Clinton from Media, And we've got to welcome our guest today, Alan Fetters from Ballard Property Group in Double Bay. Alan, welcome. Thank Thanks for, for joining me. us, my friend. Thank you for having me, Mark. Excellent. Tell us a bit about your marketplace. So um, for the listeners out there that may not know where Double Bay is and your marketplace, maybe perhaps give them a really good insight around uh, your, your market at the moment. Uh, your average sale price, and uh, tell us a bit about this year for you as well. So, look, I, I'm pretty blessed, and uh, and I'm sure Matt would say the same thing to be able to sell in one of the most probably prestigious markets that we have in Australia. Yeah. Um, you know, I think for for a long time, the eastern suburbs of Sydney has been, you know, probably the the, the, the upper echelon of property. Yeah, the creme de la creme, um, my the friend. Creme de la creme, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, look, we, we're pretty happy. We, we aren't as um, as vulnerable, in my opinion, as, as probably the you know the majority of the of the Sydney suburbs that you know the media is saying are coming off at the moment. Yeah, right. So, you know, we've still got a lot of liquidity in the market, which is quite nice to see. So you're um, still making some sales, and yeah, saying- look, we're still we're still making some good sales. You know, there's there's probably not as many buyers around, but there's probably Really good quality buyers yeah. that we're seeing coming through. Are you seeing that so, as well, Matt? From yeah. Your group, in terms of say someone like a Ben Collier, yeah, you know, in your group, uh, high end properties, is that still moving? Certainly, clouds. Like, look, the thing is, um, we're getting buyers turning up. Yep, they're just not as bullish. Yeah, so, I'm hearing a lot of that at the and moment. The challenge is, I think. When the market really tightens, you just don't get people even registering or turning up to open. Yeah. So I'm hearing stories on the weekend of, uh, look, we sold eight out of nine last weekend in the lower North Shore. Wow. That's pretty good. That's, that's so huge. That's like to big me, market. <laughs> yeah. So it depends what, you know, I think, you know, the 60 minute stories, all these type oh, yeah. of things, people can really get caught up in it. Yep. There's still a lot of people want to buy, still a lot of people want to sell. Yes. Um, you know, unfortunately in our industry, we have, you know, births, deaths and marriages. Yeah. Um, we used people to, need houses. Yeah. When I first started, they used to call them a hatch match or a dispatch. Well, in my um, days, it was called the four D's, right? <laughs> <laughs> Death, divorce, <Yep>. destitute, <laughs> yeah. and desperate yeah. or something. And I don't know. So world, life and everything will go on. Yep. It just depends how you choose to act in the marketplace yeah, as the agent. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I, I agree. think Al's got a great approach to it. Uh, yeah. Look, and I would say, I, I don't think just the eastern suburbs is still, res- I think, look, inner west is still strong. Okay. Lower North Shore is still strong. Um, I think even some parts out, like, depends what sort of properties in the western suburbs as well. Yeah. And I'm talking because our business is national, Perth, yeah, yeah, yeah. over there, they're, they're seeing green shoots, their market's coming back, they've been on their knees since the mining. Right. So yeah. all across Australia, it's just parts of... Yeah. It is being picked out and not as bullish. It's very patchy, isn't it? Really? Patchy. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a good way of putting it. You can't really pack, pick it. Yeah, and just not as bullish, you'd say, or people not throwing yeah, checkbooks at us anymore. Yeah. <laughs> We've actually got to work. Now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it's good. Yeah. Enjoy it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your marketplace. Is there any sur- suburb you focus on, Alan? Yourself, so, or? look, where, where I predominantly focus on is, is anywhere from Double Bay to, to Vaucluse. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of my stuff in, in Rose Bay okay. and, um, and have been there for, you know, a few years now. So, yeah, look, as I said, you, we're, we're, um, we're in that marketplace where, uh, I think that there's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and more opportunity probably for buyers and sellers. Yes. And um, than there has been for a long time. It's been, you know, for a long time, a, a seller's market. And, yeah. and now we're seeing a few more deals. You know, actually coming to fruition instead of, you know, buyers having to come up to where the vendors are. Uh, so, exactly. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a chiller. That's what's now, happening. How, how much do you think the agent's attitude's got a lot to do with the result? I think it's got a huge, yeah. huge. It has, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, I think if you've got, if you've got a motivated vet, your agent who, who doesn't actually listen to the media and doesn't take their advice on what the market's doing, it can have a huge impact on your, on your Clouds, I reckon that's looking at Alan's approach, obviously sharp and, uh, focused, yeah. positive what he does, but in he's, terms he's, of, he's um, more better dressed than both of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm trying well, to tell you about the Clinton anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, the reason I said that just sort of just jumped into my mind. I mean, You've got owners at the moment that might be feeling, that, you know, the prices have come down. You've got buyers that are sort of feeling there's opportunity. All we need to do is be on our A game. Yeah, yeah, Cause, yeah totally. Because people buy your energy, right? Absolutely. So if you're going out thinking the market's down, yeah. have a guess what's going to be down. Yeah, you. I'll guarantee it's down. Correct. If you go out thinking it is what it is, yeah. well, yeah. it will be what it is. Yeah, it's like and, a, it's like a boxing fight. You know, yeah. if, if if you're in one corner and you think that you the other the other opponent's going to defeat you no matter what, what's going to happen? You're going to get knocked out. 
Yeah. But if you're, if you're in your corner and you've got your coaches around you in the, in the same wavelength as you, yeah. you know, so you're going confident. That's you're belief, well. I guess you'd exactly. say. So no, belief, yeah. Absolutely. But I think it's really important for us as agents mm. to really uplift our clients at the moment. Totally. You totally. know, I've got some clients I'm working with at the moment, um, long-term mm. clients of mine, got a block of five units. They they got a DA in a year and a half ago. Market was flying. Yep. It's kind of, I sat down with them and I said, I literally sat down with them and said, look, you're obviously following the media. Yep. I said, so am I, but we're not going to let that run the campaign. campaign. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what can we do differently? Yeah. Now we're in a market where it's not as buoyant. What? How can we generate more inquiry That's right. rather than just using the hope method like yeah. realestate.com, <laughs> <main.com, laughs> the signboard? What exactly. can we do differently? So we put a strategy in place Fantastic. different to yeah. what we would be probably have done six months ago. Mm. Right. Because you've got to move the market, I haven't agree. you? I agree. And it's those types of things. Vendors love that. They well, can see you actually well, having a crack. You know? I'll tell you right now, today the, the agent requires a different level of tactics, strategies mm. and ideas to sell property. I think what you were doing last year is not going to work today, mm. right? So it's, it's almost like what is your idea or tactical strategy that you can take to your vendor or owner that's really going to separate you from everybody else because the agents who do that are the ones who are going to win. You know, I was, I was talking to a guy, I said, there's so many agents in the marketplace, what makes you different, right, to everyone else? And he really couldn't come up with his either point of difference or point of value, right? And I said, I'll tell you how congested it is. There's 300 golfers, because I love golf, in the PGA circuit. I said, name me 10 of them, right? And you probably could mainly, if you weren't a, a golf nut, you'd probably name about two or three, like Adam Scott, Tiger Woods, and then you'd be struggling to find some other one in your head of, of, of who the golfers are. That's how congested it is. There's so many agents in the marketplace. How will you be remembered for people in the marketplace to know who you are and what you do? Right, so it's like you're saying, Pat, Great Pat, analogy. It, it, but you know what you're saying, uh, Matt, is the people who are going to win the business today. It's like you got to say to yourself, "Is there's no way I'm, you know, I'm, I'm positive and, and I'm going to be great, and, and but you know, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, and then I'm not happy." Right? It's almost like you got to say to yourself in this marketplace that there is a way, and I'll find a way. And the moment you have that little shift in your thinking. You have a devil, a different level of execution when you start making calls. You have a different level of execution when you're going into a listing presentation, right? Because all of a sudden, like what you said before, Matt, it's like you have a level of belief. And when you go in with that belief, people buy that, right? And people move with you on that. Where agents are losing today is they're finding it it's hard, it's challenging. And like you said, Matty, it's like all of a sudden is look at their body language, look at their nuance, right? Like you walk with your head down, you know, deals are tough. I've got like my days on market are like, you know, 65 days on average right now. And, you know, is this market ever going to get better? The thing about it though, in, in my opinion, this, this marketplace and where it's heading is heading into the hands of hustlers. Yes. You know, if you really want to make this thing happen yep. and you're going to actually do anything in your power yeah. to make it happen, yeah. you know, as, as Matt just nailed it, you know, touching on, you got to forget about realestate.com and domain actually producing your buyer. Yeah. Yeah, that's th th that's going to instill a level of competition yeah, amongst so the buyers, but you've got to make the calls, you've got to make the phone calls, you've got to make door knocks, you know what I mean? Like that's... Yep. That's that, what I mean, that leads me to a really interesting question for you. Um, so if you jump onto Instagram right now and look at your page, you've got just over 6,000 followers. What's your approach at the moment with social media? How important do you think that is for your business? Uh, look, I, I think social media is just a touch point. You know, I, I don't put, uh, you know, look, I put a lot of effort into social media, but I, I'm, I'm more future-proofing my business. You know, I think uh, right now it's probably not a, as relevant. It's probably as, as it is going to be in the next 5, 10, 15 years. You know, my, my demographic of followers are probably between 24 and 30. You know, those people are going to be owning properties in the next 5 to 10 years. How old are you, Al? Uh, Matt, I'm 24. Okay. So, I'll be yeah. your 18, thanks. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I've been doing pretty well. <laughs> uh, no, so look, I, I think that, you know, it's an element of my business. It's a, yep. it's a, it's a, you know, it's a tool in, in the arsenal um, that I'm building over time and it's going to be successful in the future. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's just, as I said, just a touch point. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. You're not relying on anything. I, I think Cloud's one of the biggest things, and Clinton, you just sort of sort of went down that path. If we rely on realestate.com, say you rely on realestate.com and domain.com yep. and a signboard, yep. 
why does the owner need you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they can do exactly. the same thing. They can Great put, point, a, exactly. they can put yeah. a for sale by owner. Yeah. Just to call them a FISBO. Yeah, right? You can put their name up and you can stick a... <laughs> they can go to realestate.com. They can yeah. go to domain.com. They can actually put the ad on. Yep. And they can live in the same hope method that most they agents They just do. Yeah, so yeah, what yeah. are you going to do at every listing presentation from today differently? Points of value comes back mm-hmm. to Add value, correct. Correct, yeah. The other thing I think it's missing from the agent's repertoire at the moment from what I can see, and I've been driving this into our team nationally, yeah. is empathy. Oh. Right? Am I here to... I love you. I, I had a I love button you. with you, did I? Uh, so no, what, no, I, what yeah, I mean yeah. by empathy like, is... Um, <laughs> it was one of those moments, you know. <laughs> you did that, no problem. You're up at the altar clouds, <laughs> are you? Back at some ridges. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, <clears throat> so what's, what I mean by empathy is the market's come back, Owners have lost money somewhere. Some yeah. people will, will actually lose money, Alan, in, in, in yeah, some of the properties. Some people lose money, right? Yeah. They paid stamp due. They need to sell. Mm-hmm. Buyers are finally seeing light. Yes. And rather than agents coming back and going, oh, vendors overpriced this, that, and the other, have some empathy around what they, why they're overpriced. That's right. right? The buyer's all aggressive and wants to put a low offer in. Have some idea. They've been beaten down yeah. for the last four years trying to find a family home. Have Correct. some empathy around that. Yeah. Correct. Bring empathy into the two situations and you'll just keep closing deals. And you'll win, right? You'll win. And, 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 what's you one, and, and here's the thing, right? What's one thing us as humans want to feel all the time? As a human, yeah. we want to feel loved. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And the more you can throw empathy, doesn't matter who it is, a buyer, a seller, and also put yourself in their shoes. That's what I always say. Like, put yourself in the shoes think, of the yeah, seller. Totally. Put yourself in the shoes of the buyer. Like, the buyer for the last three years has been going to auctions, perhaps, and missed out, missing missed out. out, missing out, missing out, but spending thousands of dollars on building and pest inspection, not winning the house of their dreams at auction, and then all of a sudden- Has anybody ever missed out on purchasing a property? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what, how's that feel? Oh, just ask my wife, Pauline yeah, Avenue. Just Kuchy. ask my wife. Back in, <laughs> back in 1998, we missed out on We went to this open because the problem is you got to look at it from the buyer's point of view. When they get excited about something, what do they do? Mm. They tell everyone in their circle, yeah, totally. we found our place, we're going to have a go at it. Yeah. All of their friends are ringing them, texting, good luck on the big day, you know, yes, saying a prayer yes. for them at the auction or whatever. Yes. They get there and they miss out and then it's a social sort of situation where yeah. – we missed out. Yeah. And we've got to tell everyone now. Totally, right? totally. And yeah. then, you know, like you've mo- a lot of people mentally move into properties. Have you seen them? Yeah, like they yeah, yeah. mentally, yeah, look, little Johnny can sleep there, little Mary can go there, we can have our barbecues out here. It's and, that emotional yeah. connection yeah. already and then that place where you get there and then all of a sudden you're let down. Do One of I mean? the first things I, we always practice is if we somebody misses out on auction, they're the first people we go to, not the buyer. Yeah, we go yeah, to the yeah. underbidders and say, listen, really sorry, let us find you something. Yeah. And we're on to them straight away that afternoon. You can make one deal with the three. You know, exactly right. But it's yeah. a, that's one part of the res- That's the byproduct. But the main intention is to understand how they feel. Yeah, totally, totally. So, so be- beautiful of what we're talking about at the moment. So. Yeah. It's all about your attitude, your mindset, yeah. right? Um, if it's, it's going to be useless if you just sort of say to yourself, you've got to think about strategies and ideas in this marketplace, like mm. you're saying. Mm. That's what you've got to bring those points yep. of value that you're mentioning. Yep. And empathy plays a big part, right? Totally. So, Alan, you're on the show here on The Mentors, and you know we love a question, Matt and I, and Clinton. <laughs> so uh, what's your pressing question for The Mentors today? Look, guys, I, I obviously, you know, amongst this room, there's, you know, multiple years of experience in the room. Yeah. Know, and uh, and once you put our listeners on, plug that exactly, in. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, they're, they're coming in as well. So, yeah, look, I, I think where, where, uh, where the, the industry is heading is as, as, as the market starts to tighten up, people start to go back, um, you know, to what they know. Yeah. Um, and that's an agent who's been in the industry for 30, 40, 50. Oh, you know that's I mean? good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, how would you, Matt, and, you know, and, and guys, how, how would you probably, being a younger agent, um, stay above, okay. you know, so the competition? This is, this is great. Great question. Can, I just, can we just hold that question for a moment? So uh, the other week I was in a workshop, Matt, and we're talking about points of value with the group that we're training with. And uh, one guy came up and he said, well, you know, he's been in the industry for 25 years. And he just sort of said, was talking, and, we, and he role played it like he was talking to a potential seller. And he said, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, uh, just think for a moment, if you were flying to LA, and you knew on that flight you're expecting some turbulent weather, some really rough conditions. Did you want the captain that had 25 years experience manhandling that plane to get you to LA, or did you want the rookie that just came out of uh, flying school? I was like, wow, that's powerful. <laughs> like when you put it in that perspective, you know, in terms of because they're all here in the market, 
So on the flip side, we've got Alan here who's asking the so question. So you just okay, my competition so, more. Say, so. for example, one of your competition in your marketplace could say that because yeah, you know, yeah, you've got, some, hev- you got uh, some heavy hitters in your marketplace in Double Bay. There are some agents, you know, like, let's be honest, Bart Doffs, the Bill Malusa of the world, they've been there for a long, long time. And they might, you know, say, well, here's a, here, I've got this experience. Do you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, do you really want someone young, you know, handling the sale of your home who's never navigated through this um, sort of conditions, right? So, Matt, what would you sort of <coughs> advice give to Alan Look, in that respect? I've coached and mentored lots of young people over the years. <clears throat> I think my, my view immediately is if you're good enough, you're old enough, right? That's my first thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm really not interested in who's in my marketplace. It's about not everybody knows the seniors. Like you'll think that they all know the Bart Doffs, the Bill Maloofs, whoever they may be, but they don't because yeah. people don't buy and sell every day of the week. Yeah. That's the angle. So what you want is you want all the people they don't have. Yes. And there's a, there's a big marketplace. They might have 20% market share. You want the 80% yeah. they don't have. Yeah. And <clears throat> There's people your age coming into the market that probably don't associate with people of an older generation that would be right into your way of yeah. approaching them. So you've got plenty of options. The other thing is I also like to use the uh, um, Bradbury rule, Stephen Bradbury, like, you know, eventually <laughs> they're all going to fall over in front of you. Yeah. So if you just keep skating. You, go, you go in and win gold. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping if for. You just keep skating, if you just keep skating, yeah. you've got to keep skating though. That's yeah, the I problem. Agree. People go, I oh, look up and they forward. see they see the big guns and they go, oh, I'll never beat them. But one by one by one. And I can tell you 20 years ago, the people are at the top of the tree in Double Bay, Eastern Suburbs in your market are not the same names now. No, and 20 years before that, they're not the same names. And in 20 years' time from now, won't be the same names. I agree. I agree. Right? Um, so there will be a changing of the guard. It's just whether you're the one they want to select when the guard changes. Yeah. That's actually the key. Yeah. So what have you got to do between now and the guard change? And and it's it's the Bradbury rule. If you looked at those top three agents Clouds just mentioned, they would they might let's say they've got thirty percent market share between them. There's seventy up for grabs. Yeah. That's a bigger market than they've got. Mm-hmm. So imagine if you could control forty percent of the seventy. Mm-hmm. Eventually you'll end up controlling the thirty. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Because what's happening the people I'll explain to you how it works. Just say they have a top end of the market sort of which is where they predominantly yeah. sit. Yep. Yeah. It's the people underneath that that are going to buy those properties. Mm-hmm. That's where you are. Mm-hmm. So eventually, you'll get to sell and they'll buy, and then you'll, they'll be your clients in 10 years' time. Correct. So, right? Their yeah, circle. It's a food chain, right? Yeah. So the best part of the food chain to start off is at the bottom. Yeah. Right? Because the big fish eat the next fish, eat the next fish, and eventually yeah. Yeah. Gonna, you're going to be the big yeah. fish, right? Yeah. Um, and then the smart strategy then is when you become – what I find is where a lot of the top end of town becomes redundant, and I'm making sure that doesn't happen to yeah. our people, they don't build enough people like yourself underneath them. Mm. So if they did that, they'd control the whole market. They'd get the little fish, the small fish, the medium fish, the big fish. They go and they set themselves up here and they say, I want to deal with these sort of properties. And so it's something for you to know when you get to that position, the bread and butter you want stuff. to remember the little fish mm. because when the market drops, the first thing to drop is that top yeah, end. Top end. This bottom, yeah, people yeah. can still afford. Mm. They mightn't go for the 10, 15, 12 million, 9 million, 8 million. So they'll go for the threes to fives to twos or 1 million, whatever it may be. And that's relevant in every market, whether we're talking Brisbane, Perth, Melbourne, it's all relevant. If you're in the $10 million space in Melbourne, I'd want to be in the $2 million space as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I agree. It's, it's about the Do you agree? Yep. You know, it's, you know, making sure that you're, you're, uh, you're in all marketplaces, not just yeah, the and particular the big, price point. Yeah, the big stuff is great to have, but yeah. it's it doesn't turn as quick and move as fast as the little stuff. Yeah, so mm. you, you've got to yeah. have the bread and butter. Yeah, exactly. You know. Um, in the marketing world, what's been interesting um, to pay attention to is where people are focusing, right? So I think you're already ahead of the curve by what you're doing on Instagram right now, but you need to take that same approach and then think of yourself like a small media company. Um, you, you are in the business of buying and selling houses, but how do you then turn your business into more of a media company? Because right now, at least for the next six to 12 months, content creation is the thing that will be able to allow you to tell your story, to get the attention, to be able to make those stepping stones to the top. Um, and then the, the second thing, which has been interesting, which I've listened to quite a bit, is um, Jeff Bezos has recently just come out as the world's richest man. Um, and you know, if you go onto YouTube and you watch some of his content, 
he's um, the central thing that he focuses on that I think has helped them get to where they are now. Seven hundred and fifty mil. He's worth one hundred and fifty eight. Um, yeah, exactly right. He he talks about customer obsession as the thing, um, and the customer obsession is all about focusing not just on what customers want right now, but the fact that they're unhappy, but they don't realise they're unhappy. So you're always looking for a better way to do it. Um, and then I've had a conversation with Michael Coombs this week as well. I just said to him, what, what do you think has helped you be successful on the lower North Shore? And he says, um, to, for him, it was adaptability. Um, and that's about being able to talk to a first home buyer versus a celebrity. Yeah. And, and it's always going to be different. Point. Well, it's, it's, it, for him, it's actually what he said is it's not the same conversation because every single person has a different need. So when he's having the conversation, he's asking the questions and spending more time listening mm -hmm. about what they need. So um, I think for any business to do well right now is to think of yourself more as a media company yeah. and to also focus on your customer. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, we're basically in a customer service based industry. Yeah, that's right. You See, know, that's I, really I, awesome. I saw Jeff Bezos, I saw a story about him where he's kept his same email address. Mm. Did you see that story? That they no. <clears throat> he's kept it because when people want to write a complaint, he gets it. Right. So that's yeah, kept yeah, him yeah. on the ground. You know, a yeah. lot of these people put a firewall between yeah. themselves and the media mm. or in the marketplace. Um, he's gone bang and yeah. he say he gets the complaints he said he gets often he gets them and he yeah. just sends to the head of that division a question mark yeah he, said he doesn't make a word and they have to come back with a statement as to what they've done about it but you know what the great thing is there it's just about being in the trenches right like remaining in the trenches because that's where all the fun happens it's like you're still you know on a day-to-day -day level hearing complaints or whatever else and this is where it gives you a, an opportunity not an obligation because I'm like, oh, it's an obligation. Oh, I don't want that. But it's not. Here's my opportunity to improve my services. How can I create that better customer experience and this doesn't happen again? So well, that, that's what I'm seeing at the moment as well. You know, in, in my marketplace anyway, the the older, more complacent agents who yep. are just used to sitting there and, and watching the phone ring. Yeah. Uh, you know, are losing listings every day so, to younger guys like yeah, yourself yeah, who and, are actually going towards the market. And Alan, and this is the thing. It's it's where you can actually go to your marketplace and actually differentiate yourself and saying, look, you know, one of the things that you'll find once we start working together is I'm not the agent who's been in Double Bay for a long time that waits for the market. I'm the agent that, you know, is that goes out and goes to the market. And these are the seven steps that I do before going onto the market with your home. And then all of a sudden you're illustrating, demonstrating to them, say seven things that you may do prior to them coming onto the market, which maybe one of the bigger high profile agents who's been there for 30 or 40 years in the marketplace isn't able to demonstrate that because they're just going to be the agent that waits for the market, right? All of a sudden in that prospect's thought and mind process, they're thinking, well, here's a guy that's offering something a little bit different to everyone else. And they'll buy your energy because you've got high energy. They'll buy your passion because I can see you're passionate, right? And all of, yeah, and all of that straight away, why do people do business with people? They choose people because they like them. They do business with people they like, right? So you get all of those little things in order, all of a sudden you create a degree of separation between you and the guys who have been there for 30 or 40 years. So um, like Matt said, there is so much opportunity. If some guy's got 30% out there of that market share of those couple of high heavy performers, mm. there's still 70% available out in the marketplace, Yeah, right? I agree. Now it's about like just, just getting, going. Yeah, just exactly. Know. And doing the doing the activity and and having that degree of separation yeah, when you're exactly. in someone's lounge, you, mm. you can actually just got to outwork that. everybody else yeah, in your market. Yeah. Totally, but like the younger yeah. guys who are doing well, that's all. That's all. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's that's what we're doing. And so. what do they say? It's harder to stay at the top than actually climb the exactly. mountain, right? So yeah. that's that's complacency. So I'm enjoying that's where they start resting the on their laurels. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So totally. Exactly. So, um, all right. So, Alan, as we wrap up this session today on the mentors, episode number twenty-four, has the mentors answered your question? Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for having me, Buzz. Don't get too excited. It. Just calm yeah, exactly. down. Just tell the excitement here. <laughs> no, 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 thanks. Thank, no, I appreciate it. You know, no, no, obviously. no. And, mate, we, we, best, best coach in Australia right here. So absolutely. And he's my personal he's coach as well, guys. So. Absolutely. Glad he hasn't seen You watch, you, you listen so to all the mentors. He's a guru. He's a guru. He's a guru. He's a guru. You know, he was pretty good at tennis too. He's got a hidden secret. He's talking about golf, but he's actually better at tennis. I've got to take him on the golf course and take his money off him. He's taking too much off me. <laughs> so I've got to get to watch. Back. Have you watched all the mentor series so far? Uh, not not every single you see, one. Yeah, seen, yeah, but I've yeah. seen a couple. Claudia, we, we, we have sessions cut, you know, every What's every your view on them? So. You've taken some things out of it? Yeah, yeah. No, look, I think, um, you know, every time 
I meet with Claudio anyway. It's a, it's a, it's a new experience. So. It's a mentor session every time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, exactly. that's exactly yeah. right. You know? Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, the whole thing about the mentors is having, you know, technology side, mm. experience of a leadership side, mm. you know. Mm. On a, I a think it's just, it's, just it's, it's real as well. You know, you're not getting someone screaming down your head well, you know, trying to tell you how to do real estate. It's more no. on the yeah. same level. It's real. It's genuine. Well, so. Claudio, to his credit, saw a gap in the market um, where – it's not about it's it's about every it's about the people in the industry. Yeah. And there's no ulterior exactly. motive to it, as mm. you can see. Correct. <laughs> and keep it relevant, right? Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us here on episode twenty four. Remember, if Thanks, you like guys. this session, like, share the page, and also if you want a question for the mentors. Just DM us. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.